Hi folks, hope you're well. Welcome to this video on cardiovascular drift. So again, another one of the questions that could come up on the heart. Again, typically we're looking at maybe three to four marks for a question on this topic. So things, uh, you know, you know, important marks to get. You'll notice that we've, um, we're revisiting a bit of old stuff as well. Stroke volume times heart rate equals cardiac output. That is what cardiovascular drift is to do with. As you can remember from watching the videos, stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out of the heart per beat. So we'll do a little per beat to remind us of that. Heart rate, remember, is BPM, how many, heart, how many times your heart beats per minute. And cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped out of your heart per minute. So there are three things that we need to be aware of. So what is cardiovascular drift? Well, I've done a picture of a lady here running Okay, now what I've done on this side is what should happen during exercise and what actually happens. And this is what cardiovascular drift is referring to, the what actually happens. Now what should happen during exercise? Well that's what should happen. Stroke volume should increase, okay, heart rate should increase and cardiac output should increase. When you start jogging like this lady has here, the amount of blood your heart pumps out per beat should increase. That's Stalin's law of the heart, and it, you, and it does. Your heart rate, the number of times your heart beats per minute, will increase. Common sense. And if both of these increase, well, that must increase, because I'm timing that by that in order to get that. So cardiac output, the volume of blood pumped out of my heart per minute, will also increase. And do you know what? I'm saying what should happen. Do you know what? That's largely what does happen. That's what happens the vast majority of the time. But then let's just think about this a second. If this lady here is going to go on a continuous run, she's going to go on a, on a, on a, on a run, two mile run, something like that, a two mile jog. If she runs at the same pace, her stroke volume is going to ultimately level out. Okay, her heart rate will level out and her cardiac output will level out. Just think about that for a minute. When you start running at the same pace, these will all eventually start to equal themselves out, okay? Now, what I mean by that, let's take heart rate as an example, okay? Very, very quickly. Let's just do a very brief graph here, and I'm going to do heart rate and then time along the bottom there. If that's your resting heart rate, and then you suddenly decide to start running, it will increase, Okay, your heart rate will increase. But if you then set on a pace, if you then start running at 10 kilometers an hour and you don't increase that speed or decrease that speed, your heart rate is going to stay at its higher value, but it's going to level out. Okay, the same is true for your stroke volume and the same is true for your cardiac output. That is exactly what we should see during exercise. And you know what? That is largely what happens during exercise. So what then? is cardiovascular drift. Well, as you can see by the green writing that's just appeared, what actually happens during exercise, heart rate continues to increase even when you're exercising at the same intensity. Now that shouldn't happen. If I'm running at the same speed, my heart rate should continue to stay at the same number of beats per minute. Yes, if I th then decide to run faster, the heart rate should increase. Or if I decide to start running slower, the heart rate should decrease. But heart rate shouldn't really increase when I'm running at the same speed. What happens is cardiovascular drift. We start to see that and it, a continuous increase in heart rate, even though I'm working at the same intensity. But it's a unique situation when that occurs. And that's what we're going to look at now. Right, so when does cardiovascular drift occur? Well, it only occurs, and I'll draw, draw a little line here, after 20 minutes of exercise. So you're only going to get cardiovascular drift after 20 minutes of exercise, right? You're going to be working at least that long. Now, what is the significance of that? Okay, what is the significance of the 20 minutes? What, well, after 20 minutes, you are going to be sweating quite a bit you're going to be losing so basically you're going to be suffering from loss of fluids 
that's what's going to happen after about 20 minutes. Anything less than that, you're not really going to sweat enough to, to lose significant uh, uh, fluid volume. Right, now here's something else that you might know, you might not know. 50% of your blood, exactly half of your blood, is plasma. And plasma is a posh word for water, okay? So 50% of your blood is plasma. So what is happening is, you are going to suffer, after about 20 minutes, some plasma loss from the blood. i.e. you are going to lose some water from your blood to help with sweating. You might be thinking, oh, well, just drink more water. Even if we do drink water, we can't replace it at the same rate as which we lose it. So we're actually, from after about 20 minutes onwards, even if we are trying to rehydrate, we are slightly losing water from the blood. Now that is having an effect on the blood. And here's a key word that you need to know. The blood becomes viscous. Now that's a word that you are going to have to learn. Viscous means thick. If something is high viscosity, it is thicker. Now just think about that for a minute. If you're an average sized person, eight pints of blood, five litres of blood, whichever you prefer. Let's go with the five litres of blood. Half of that blood is water, is plasma. 2.5 litres of it is water. Let's say you lose half a litre of that water to help with sweating. You've now got four and a half litres of blood. You've still got the same number of red blood cells and white blood cells and everything else. All you have lost is the water from the blood. But because you've still got the same number of blood cells but less water, the blood has thickened up. It's become more viscous. Okay? Well, what is the effect of that? If your blood is thicker, if it is more viscous, your blood is going to be harder to pump around. The heart, as a result, is going to find it harder to pump the blood. So what you're going to actually have is a reduced stroke volume. You are not going to be able to pump out as much blood per beat because it's thicker. Okay? Now that's what cardiovascular drift is. Remember the equation on the previous page? Stroke volume times heart rate equals cardiac output. My cardiac output, okay, is dependent on the stroke volume and the heart rate. If my stroke volume is decreasing, if it's reducing, my heart rate has to increase to compensate for that fact. If one's going up, so if one's going down, the other one has to go up, okay? That's what we're basically saying here. And it would appear in a question in the following way. Now, here's a typical question on cardiovascular drift. Here's figure three. During exercise, the pulse rate or the heart rate of a performer will change. Figure three shows the stroke volume, pulse rate and cardiac output of a performer completing a 45-minute run at some maximal pace. Now, straight away, look, we're over the 20 minutes. It's a 45-minute run. So, we're over 20, uh, 20 minutes. Now, look what's happening here. Arbitrary units, because we've got heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output all there, Time along the bottom. So what's happening is stroke volume has increased and it stayed at his, you know, pretty much plateaued, stayed level about 10 minutes. But after about 10 minutes up to 20, stroke volume has started to fall away. As a result, heart rate has had to continuously, gradually increase in order to compensate for that fact. Okay. Now, before you start panicking, you'll notice, hang on, well, if one's dropped and one's gradually increased... Why hasn't cardiac output stayed the same? Why is it slightly increased? That's a bit of an anomaly. I'm going to deal with that in a minute. But let's first see how we'd answer a question on cardiovascular drift. So as we can see, cardiovascular drift typically three marks. Use figure three to explain the term cardiovascular drift. Here's how we'd do it. Mark number one, cardiovascular drift starts after 20 minutes. In some of the old papers, it'll say 10 minutes you know, 10 minutes, you've really not lost enough 
fluid and that's widely acknowledged now. So cardiovascular drift starts after about 20 minutes of exercise. We're going to get a second mark for saying that fluid is lost from the blood as sweat as a result of that. What happens to the blood as a result? It becomes more viscous, it becomes thicker, okay? And to finish off with there, what happens as a result? Stroke volume decreases because the heart is finding it more difficult to pump the blood around the body because it is more viscous. So stroke volume decreases, so heart rate has to increase in order to compensate for that fact. Now that is essentially what cardiovascular drift is. Now I said to you earlier, earlier on, you might be a little bit confused then why cardiac output gradually increases. Let me put your mind at rest. I've seen this question asked in two ways. This way and another way where cardiac output just remained constant, okay? So if I was to draw it on now, it would just be a nice constant line all the way across. That's generally the way they ask for it now. This is a slightly older question, but it's the more complicated one of the two, and that's why I thought I'd best cover it in this video. Why have they shown a gradual increase in cardiac output? Well, what happens is, because you're losing water from the blood in order to help you sweat, that's not a great situation to be in, and now there's a real risk that you might start to overheat. You might start to get a little bit too warm, and your core body temperature um, might actually start to rise. So what generally happens is, in some instances, your cardiac output slightly increases, particularly to help increase blood flow to the skin to help you lose that extra heat so that you can help with the sweating process ever so slightly. That is by far the most complicated question. But what we've got to do is just stay nice and calm. Look at the marks available. Three marks. I'd say worst case scenario, cardiovascular drift, four marks well straight away i am definitely let me get a bit of color i am definitely getting a mark for saying that okay cardiovascular drift starts after 20 minutes i'm definitely getting a mark for saying that fluid is lost from the blood as sweat you know when we're exercising beyond 20 minutes i am definitely getting a mark for saying as a result the blood becomes more viscous and i am definitely getting at least one mark for saying that stroke volume decreases so heart rate has to increase okay so if I can remember those four points with regards to cardiovascular drift, I've cracked it, I've got the marks. One little way that some people have used to remember it in the past is cardiovascular drift, sometimes in teaching we abbreviate it to CV drift, okay? Some people always get cardiovascular drift and Stalin's law of the heart confused with each other. Cardiovascular drift, CV drift, although the V stands for vascular, help the, use the V to stand for viscosity as well. So it's cardiovascular drift, CV drift, V, viscosity, right, that's, this is the one where I lose water from the blood, the blood becomes more viscous, and then you're off, you're up and running with your answer. So use the V of cardiovascular drift, the CV drift, to help remind you that there's a viscosity element to this, the blood has become thicker, okay? Hope that, hope that helps you folks. Watch this video as many times as you need to, and use the information in your book to answer the questions on this topic.